Hello everyone, I'm Lenny Chan, and I am at New York City Health and Hospitals, Kings County's YouTube podcast, where Live on New York is a special guest today uh, with one of many of my heroes, uh, Marcia, who is a donor mom and who in the organ and transplantation, uh, organ donation and tissue donation community is who we hold in the highest regard as a donor family. Uh, we would not be here without you and the loving gift that you've given to our community, Marcia. Um, so very happy to have you here speaking with our audience. And um, if you could just tell us, you know, what connected you to donation um, about your family member and, um, you know, what, why you're here with us today and, and, and what the result of that was. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. Uh, my son was a giver in life. He gave everything. He gave himself away. There wasn't much left to give. Um, he helped numerous people intervene in crimes and prevented crimes. Um, he was just held in high regard in the community. And uh, he would go out of his way to help anyone. He saved a lady from who was about to be raped. Um, an old lady with dementia was wandering the streets naked. He saw her, covered her with his coat, called EMS and stayed with her until they came. There were so many stories. Um, when something happened in the street, if he happened not to be out there, he would be very upset. I should have been there. There was a friend of his who killed her boyfriend, well, ex-boyfriend, and she had been calling him, calling him, and he was asleep. When he woke up the next day and heard about it, he was in tears. I should have been there, I should have been up. If I was there, I would have prevented it. I could have prevented it. And there's so many stories like that. Um, he just gave and gave of himself. And I know that he also served in the military. Yes, he did. And so even before that, um, somebody who was a hero for our country, for our world, somebody who was a hero in the community in life, and somebody who was a hero even in his passing. Yes, is yes. absolutely um, amazing. Um, you know, as, as amazing as that is, as a, as a mother, as a community member, um, obviously without saying so difficult that requires so much healing and you know live on New York and New York City Health and Hospitals Kings County we work with families and these are our donor hospitals our donor families talk to us about that healing how did donation help with your own healing for this tragedy well it was the worst day of my life uh, hearing that my son was brain dead and the doctor said to me I can write his death certificate right now that was the worst day of my life he's took us out to the waiting room, he spoke, he spoke to us and he said, um, someone else is gonna come speak to you. And when the nurse walked in from Levon, New York, I didn't know who she was, but I saw the pin, the lapel pin, with a heart, it was a heart. And I said immediately, are you, are you from organ donor? And she said yes. And it was like, there was such a peace that came over me. I didn't think of organ donation, even though I'm a nurse, because hey, it's the worst day of my life. But seeing her, I immediately said, yes, I have to do this. I didn't ask my husband permission. <laughs> I didn't ask my daughter permission. I said yes, and they agreed. Um, it brought hope in such a dark, dark situation, knowing that my son, and I felt that this is, this is what he would have wanted, knowing him. Um, I felt he would have wanted to continue helping in his death. He helped so much in his life, I felt he would want to continue helping. We never talked about death, what he wanted. He experienced so much death, he didn't want to talk about it. He couldn't even accept my death, that I would eventually die. And he wanted to die before I died. Um, so I felt that he would want to continue helping. Um, and I, was, I felt honored that four people were able to live because of my son. Uh, his kidneys, uh, his heart, and his liver were all uh, acceptable, and uh, I'm really happy about it. You know, Marcia, you bring up such a, a great point that our 
audience and community members need to know about, right? Which is that you made that decision for your son, yes. right? That you knew that it was what he would have wanted and what he represented. And as nurses, and I'm a nurse, you're a nurse, we both know that that's how we're trained. But also as human beings, we know that that's how we should make decisions for people as far as what they want and what they represent. Right. But the good and great point that you bring up that people need to know is there's two ways to become a organ and tissue donor. Um, through first person, you filling out the registry or your driver's license or document saying so, or making sure that the people around you who love you, who make decisions for you, know what you represent, what you stand for. And that was the case here. So you made that decision for him. Right. Right. And, um, you know, about 80% of our area and here in New York City in the metropolitan region, around 80% of families are the ones who make those decisions, as opposed to 20% of donors being first person. Um, what would you say to the community about registering now that you've gone through that process, now that you know? What would you say to our community about registering to be an organ and tissue donor? I would say register. Um, my eldest daughter registered many years ago. I was still on the fence until a few months before my son passed, I signed uh, my driver's license to be an organ donor. And, um, and of course, I, I, I had to make that decision for him. I encourage everyone to make that decision. We never know, you know, what's going to happen. I never thought my son would be, you know, would have died that early. And um, stop sitting on the fence. I, I was on the fence myself, but there's no reason to be on the fence anymore. We can save so many lives. Uh, God forbid we are in an accident, um, we die unexpectedly, we can save so many lives. And if you never had that discussion with your loved one, as I didn't have, just look at the person your loved one was. Were they the type of person that would want, that helped, that helped others, which my son did. Um, he gave his last, the last dollar he would have in his pocket. He would buy candy for the kids or give to someone who needed it. Um, he didn't feel that he needed to save money. People need, I'm going to give away. He was just a giver. So if your loved one was that type of person, um, not even to that extent, you know, you can save lives. You can save lives by donating. Maybe that's what they would want. That's what I felt my son would want, to continue helping people. And that's the beautiful connection to donation, right? That for families, for individuals, for people, their community, their friends, generationally could live on through right. your son's gift. Right. And that is beautiful, and we thank you for it. And we thank you for your advocacy, and we thank you for your, your son and the gift that he gave to our community. Thank, thank you, you so much. It's an honor.